Yes. Yes, and there's a lot of power in entrepreneurship because I, I neglected to mention that not only did my grandfather uh, establish the first hospital for people of color, he also co-owned an insurance company in New Orleans. Huge. And, uh, and I found out also from, from Randall Wilson, who's from Menden, he's now in Baton Rouge. He sent me a picture of Lynn Whitfield one night on my Facebook page. I saw a post. I remember waking up in the middle of the morning. It was the mid-morning. I woke up and I saw a picture of Lynn Whitfield, whom I love. Like I totally like began to adore her when she portrayed Josephine Baker. I was a French major at Texas A&M. I studied in France, so you don't find very many French majors at Texas A&M. Okay, who is who is she? I saw a picture of Lynn Whitfield and had sent me, and he he prefaced it by saying, "Oh, Shanidria, my dear sister, uh, the co-owner of your grandfather's insurance company, Keystone Life Insurance in New Orleans." Uh, in Louisiana, was a dentist from Baton Rouge named Dr. Butler. His granddaughter is Lynn Whitfield. Oh, wow. Two granddaughters. So my granddad and her granddad were business partners. Wow. I said, that makes us cousins. I got to call Tyler. I got to call Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that oh, was yeah. fascinating to me. And people should dig up their roots. You don't know what you might find. You don't. I love Lynn Whitfield. Like, I love her. And who is she? Her. You know, from uh, Greenleaf. Greenleaf, she did. Um, she portrayed Josephine Baker. I mean, ugh, yes. She's awesome actor. That, she's amazing. She's beautiful. She's an alpha Kappa alpha woman. She was made at Howard University. I can imitate the girl. Too. She got it going on. I love her. I'm gonna meet that woman and get my autograph before this is before I leave this earth. That's my goal. That's a crazy, That's right? I would just send her an email. Hey, uh, great grand our grandfathers used to be business partners. We need to chat. I found someone who knows her. I found actually Alfred Woodard's sister is my sorority sister, and Alfred Woodard's sister commented on a post I made and said, "I know her." You know, so I'm gonna go through her to get to get her. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm so excited. You should. But in a way, my former comrade in speech class, Lanier Middle School Purple Cups, one of the most oh gosh, one of the most grounded, most talented, most brilliant classmates I ever had. Mm. Who? You. Oh, what? Yep. That that seems to be yep. yep. grounded. If you say grounded, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not so. So Tandaway is the first responder, guys. She's a nurse, guys. I gotta give you a yeah, show. They are. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, they are. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just said. What? What? No, what? Makes yeah. you, what specifically do you remember about we Tandy in in? Like, is there a special favorite? Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. So my mom was a single mom and we didn't have a car. And so we had a citywide competition. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a ride home. And Tandaway offered to have her mom bring me home. And if it weren't for Tandaway, I couldn't have competed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You brought me home. And then Tandaway also um, told me when she was a kid that her mom <laughs> did not allow them to watch Good Times. And I thought, why? <laughs> You yeah, can't why? watch Dino Might? Are you kidding me? Was it too controversial? Oh, yeah, my with daddy, Janet oh. Jackson yeah, with Penny with the Iron. Oh my God, Tandaway, why? Why can't you watch Good Times? What did you tell me? You remember? Yeah, my father wouldn't allow us to watch it. Not negative images of black people on TV. He mm -hmm. wasn't for that. Yes. yes. Of like, black people on television. But we used to sneak and watch it, right? After school, like you had to like sneak and then we'd feel the TV to make sure it wasn't too hot. So I watched all the episodes, but he didn't allow me to watch. Like it wasn't a family thing where we gathered around. So I didn't know you actually snuck and watched them. You'd be mad at Cross for sneaking and watching them. I would sneak and watch it. Yeah. When oh I my God. It. So what, what did he let you watch? I assume the Cosby yeah. show or No, or, uh, I mean, I was uh, older by then. No, the Jeffersons. Like, no, none of that. The but he watched the he and my mother watched I love, I love um, All in the Family. You know, all so All in the Family. Yeah. Aren't you burnt that? Aren't you burnt that? Yeah. Aren't you burnt Listen, it was racist, right? Yeah. Hey, listen. You can watch a racist white dude, but not a but not, not, black but, black but not negative black images of black, of black people. Archie Bunker. I guess it makes I sense. I like his wife, yes. but yeah. with her accent, I love her New York accent. Yeah. Archie, stop it, Archie. I yeah. Yeah, so no. Long. You can watch that. Talk to anyway. Huh? Guess what I talked to the other night. Talk to Tracy Wilson. 
Oh, Tracy. Yeah, how she doing? Tracy Wilson Payne. She's doing amazing things. Good. Oh, good. Amazing good. things. So you and she were the black were, were two of the of the big you know, going to an era. Um, and I'm not surprised, Sandra, that you're you're exercising your your uh, bone, your thespian talent because you, you're such a talented woman. Oh, okay. I'm expecting to turn on the television and see you, like you can still you can still do it. I can still I still won't be surprised if I turn on the TV and see you. Like you're amazing. This is so uncomfortable, but okay, thanks. Why? I just don't because you know, that's me. That's me. I just don't. I mean, really? I, think, I, I think we're in a, a time closest where that could be a thing. I mean, it could be a thing right now if you look at it YouTube. Could be a thing right now. But <laughs> but I think with the amount of of um, options there are now. Yeah. And and the hunger for content there is, oh yeah, we can get in there. It was refreshing for me to really? see you do comedy because you you're also a very serious actress. I mean, you can deliver soul stirring speeches. I mean, you can do everything. You're so versatile. Mm. And you mm. opted to you opted to take care of people. So I'm like, what is listen? I love it. We got a whole lot of stuff, but this show ain't about my life. <laughs> okay, but I can't help it. Okay, I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't help it. No, I'm I excited. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Because um, we sharpen each other. Yeah. We sharpen each other. You make me better. Oh, no, for sure. For sure. So speaking of sharpen, tell me what you're doing to to sharpen the political landscape of uh, your dear pear land. Okay. So what I'm doing yeah. to sharpen political landscape of Pearland is um, I'm trying to be the change I want to see. Mm -hmm. um, I have always, as a Texas Aggie, I've always had the ability to sit across the table from people who didn't think or vote the way that I vote to listen to their perspectives and to, and to, and to disagree respectfully. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Pierce Bush, grandson of George Bush is my Facebook friend. I had a chance to meet him. He came to my office. You know, I pride myself and in, in getting into in meeting people who have different views, even people who are on the left disagree with me on certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but as of late, uh, we have uh, the the division, in my opinion, has has become a little bit different. It's not so mm -hmm. much about ideology, it's about your morality. Mm -hmm. So we're having to make decisions about, um, you know, the perspectives of people and how they align with our moral compass and there are people yep. on both sides of the aisle with whom i don't agree um but in Pearland in particular i have a platform called the original Pearlanders page um mm -hmm. that came to be actually because a and and a friend of mine i met this woman at an event let me just tell you it's, it, this is breast cancer month october okay I lost my, my maternal grandmother and my and one of my aunts to breast cancer. Uh, about five, six years ago, there was an event in Pearland called the Red Hat Luncheon where all the who's who, constables, judges, the mayor, council members, business owners, they all go to this event to um, do a fundraiser for the Adult Literacy Center, Adult Reading Center. And I had a ticket because my sorority sister who had run for school board had a ticket. And I, I was so depressed because my maternal grandmother had just gotten a diagnosis that her cancer was back after 35 years of remission. Mm. In the bed, I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm depressed. I want to cry in the bed all day. My husband said, get up and go to that go to that brunch because there's a blessing for you. You don't know what it is. So when I get there, my sorority sister, um, there was a lady sitting there at her table. And I walk over and sit with this lady. She was a redhead. And she introduced herself. And she told me that she had five kinds of cancer. Mm. Heard me right. One yeah. kind is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. She told me her name. Hi, I'm Joy Weiner, and I have five kinds of cancer, and I'm very political. Okay, she had me at five kinds of cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had five kinds. I was upset that my maternal grandmama had it. Mm. I didn't want to go to bed. This woman had five kinds of cancer and was sitting up at the luncheon and mentioned it like I got five kinds of candy in my purse. Mm. So I was instantly drawn to her strength. So the cancer level, the playing field. I loved Obama. She didn't like Obama. I didn't care. I was born that she don't like Obama, but I'm an Aggie. I can deal with that. No problem. Okay. She can differ on a lot of things. Let's see what we connect on. And we developed a fast friendship. And basically, she gave me entree to, to the inner circle of Pearland Republicans and of Pearland political scene. So I was 
I mean, a lot of great people, a lot of, you know, people, um, a lot. And I don't like, I don't like the assumption that if you're Republican, you're bad. And that if you're Democrats, you're good. I don't. I tell people all the time, they're different shades of red, they're different shades of blue, they're different shades of purple. Get in where you fit in. Mm -hmm. so I'm not where where the do you think that assumption, where do you think that assumption comes from? It com well, the assumption comes from the fact that people look at the policies and the behavior of some of the people on the right. We can't ignore the red line and the gerrymandering, okay? Mm -hmm. We can't ignore the policies that have, that have affected us adversely as a people. We also can't ignore some of the patterns by people on the left. Now, I've, I'm an independent who, who leans left. I'm a left-leaning independent, but I'm not stupid, okay? So I see people on the left, some of them not doing right. But the bottom line is, um, because of that, that unlikely relationship, uh, I started a page as a fundraiser to, for her cancer fight. And in that cancer fight, you know, we brought in people from different parts of Paraline to bring us together in the name of cancer, and it was beautiful. I only added my friends to the page who I knew who wouldn't care if she was a Republican that would give money because she's found of cancer. Okay? But that opened my eyes to a lot of um, the racism, a lot of uh, of the history of the Republican Party in Texas. People don't even realize the Republican Party in Texas was started by Black people, you know, by Black men. CUNY Holmes, he was one of the people, the man who the CUNY Holmes was named for. But the bottom line is that, you know, those that I jailed with, I kept them. And those whom I've discovered were biggest and I write, I've kicked them to the curb. But I have found a way to bring people together to the best of my ability while also calling out the racists. <clears throat> I think that's a, just like a, a really important way to live because mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't hear an opposing view, how do you know how do you know what parts of yours are flawed, right? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I always see like things today get so politicized that it's either you're on this side or you're on that side. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that what that does is it really only satisfies a small handful of people's uh, like ideologies, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of washes out everyone else who's a little bit more diversified, a little bit more open-minded, um, or even, well, I'm not gonna say more conservative, but you know what I'm saying, more, more alternative to how they feel like things should be handled. Um, and you said, so you're independent. So what does the independent scene look like in Pearland? Is it a... Mm. Is there a well, well, okay. So I have uh, some friends who are independent who lean right. Okay, I have some friends who are independent, <coughs> former Republicans, who are supporting our current mayoral candidate, Quentin Wills. They are they were traditional Republicans, but they like Quentin. They feel that he can lead the city. They feel that he's mm -hmm. Democrat, and they traditionally don't vote Democrat. They feel that he's a people person. They feel that he is able to work with people across the aisle. They see his spirit. They, they, they may acknowledge his missteps. He's a young guy. I call him a little brother. He's 10 years my, my junior. They may see areas in which they think he needs to grow. He needs to grow. But overall, they love him. And so they're voting for him because they believe that he will be the ideal leader for our city of Pearland, Texas, even though they might be voting Democrat or Republican on other issues, on other people. They, will, they put people before the party. And that is very, very refreshing. Um, at this point, I only have maybe one friend. I have a handful of friends who, who you know, who I'm considered like I, I love them, and they vote for Trump. And they're voting for Trump. I have a black girlfriend voting for Trump. She's black woke, very into the revolution. She's mills and as she can be, vote for Trump. And when I found out, I was like, girl, why? I love you too much to let you go, but can you help me understand? <laughs> I mean, girl, I ain't gonna let you go, but. I have just had to learn that, you know, independent, again, there's not one, one way to look at it. There are different kinds of independents. There are independents who are largely Republican or largely Democrat, but they will vote for a particular candidate based on that candidate's merit. There was a, when we have the 19 you know, beautiful judges who uh, ascended to power in, in, in the judicial system in Houston, there was a judge that was Republican that was voted out. And a lot of Democrats were sad that he got voted out. They really loved him. He was a Republican, he was a good guy. So I'm finding that a lot of people in this particular election uh, are not voting straight ticket. They're voting straight, many of them are voting straight ticket, but some of them are like, I'm voting straight ticket except for that one position, 
but that guy is no good. And that's their right as American citizens to do that. It's their right. Yeah. <clears throat> there that's should be right. like a, there should be Yelp reviews for our politicians. <laughs> It should be. You should be able to look up and be like, let me see. This dude got like 1,500 bad reviews. Let me see what they're talking about. <laughs> and they're just trashing them. Because I, I find that people, it's kind of like mm -hmm. the word of Socrates' argument versus democracy, right? People are going to vote for their emotional, whatever that emotional story grabs them or their personal interests. Um, but it doesn't necessarily seem to be targeted in a way that's effective, that sh that that promotes progress. It kind of gets into a, it gets into more of like people like it. I don't know. It just becomes like a something that just doesn't seem effective. Like I I I I agree that voting should be done. And you know, just like living in my neighborhood, I've been sharing with people. You know, I see Trump way more than I see anything else. You know, and then not just in my area. Just they're they're more vocal. They're more in your face, mm -hmm. with it. but they also have probably 10 times more local um, uh, candidates that they're also promoting and pushing, you know, so they're doing the work. And these people, like you said, are very like nice individuals. I, I think one of the, one of them we met their daughter, um, cause my wife is dealing with breast cancer too. Um, mm -hmm. Their daughter was my wife's case manager, right? This guy's a mm -hmm. huge Trump flag, you know, waving from his house. Didn't even know until we went to the park. So I can, I can, like, I can understand how things should be taken as case by case on a personal level. But when it comes to voting, that's where I kind of, it, it, it just becomes a shake house for me because I vote, but I never feel 100% sure that what we are voting for is actually being addressed, uh, followed up on, executed. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm voting because I, I believe in this system of work, but if I, if someone was to tell me, can you prove, or could you, what, what, what were the things that you followed up for that you wanted to see happen? I would be like, there's no way I would be able to know if that's true or not, right? Um, unless you get down to a more local level. Um, so I always hear people because of their ignorance, add in more of their ideology, add in more of their personal interests, add in more of whatever their insecurity thing is. And that becomes a forefront of what they vote for, causing all of this, like, you know, this disconnectedness, right? We cut to a, we cut to a senator's office. Uh, okay. Uh, Sen uh, Senator Amici, Senator Amici, uh, yeah. one of your constituents, uh, John Miles mm -hmm. is uh, in the waiting room. He said he voted for you in the last election, and he wants to tell you today to see uh, if you are doing uh, the things that you said that you were going to do, because he wanted to make sure that his vote um, actually, it, you know, he used it correctly. He says it's, he's just, it's his follow through program. Okay, and you, you did explain to him that you know politics is not as simple as uh, I told, you know, I to something you I, think it is. I I told him that you know the way to follow is kind of over time. It's a slow process. Mm -hmm. He said yeah. he didn't care. Uh, this was the year of John. He was going to make sure that his vote counted, and that he just wanted to come in and 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 talk to you first, and then just go around with you all day just to make sure that you're doing the things that he voted for. Um, Okay. Um, okay, I'll let him in. No, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him see that this isn't okay. so easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, John, uh, Mr. Miles. Are we can't, Mr. Miles. Are you, are you okay? Mr. Miles, you okay? We can't hear you, Mr. Miles. I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. I was, no, I was on the phone. I was on the phone. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm right here. Oh, okay. All right. I'm also, you're a busy man too. You know, I'm a busy man. You're a busy man. Um, well, I, I come from a small town called. Uh -huh. um, Dayton, Ohio, I'm sure you've heard of it. Got a lot of people on my phone trying to get to you. And I told them I was the one that was going to get to you. So I'm here, man. Can we talk business? All right. Okay. I got to, I want to understand. How do we know that what we voted for is actually getting done? You know, how do I know that if I voted, you know, as a, as a, as a flat earther, you know, you spoke about how open-minded you wanted your, pop, your your voters to be, and I just knew that you was going to institute some some educational information about the, the science of flat Earth. And surprisingly, I've been to every public school in Dayton. I haven't seen one bit. 
Um, what's, yeah. taking, uh, what's taking so long, man? Hold on. Okay, so I, I, I did say that, but um, there's, there's a lot of people who do not believe that the Earth is flat. Um, and they think they have some compelling evidence and uh, I'm not able to change their minds on that right now. What do you, what do you mean? Not on the Are you a politician? Don't you, don't you, aren't you one step away from the laws, man? It doesn't matter what they believe. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you do what you said you was going to do. You said that you would accept all orders, all, all open-minded uh, 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 ideologies. Uh, you was going to research this flat earth thing and you were going to look at the evidence and, and you were going to get it in the schools if you found it to be true. What do I have yeah. to do to make sure that gets in the schools? That's important information. Okay, well, um, actually, um, I, I've spent a lot of money on this issue, um, and I've actually, um, I, I try to fly around the world, people say can go around the oh, world, that's impossible. That's impossible. that is impossible. I'm, I'm going to get on it right now, do you want to come with me? You say you, you want to come I, def I definitely want to come with you, because I know that we're not going around the world, you're probably taking me to some remote island, because I know That's what I said. I, you know. Is it, let's is, go. Let's, let's go and see if this is like a real thing or not. Okay, let's just prove it to ourselves that the earth is either is flat if, or it's round. If we prove it, I, am I going to see the legislation come across and I'm going to see it in the schools? Huh? No, we'll probably die because it'll go at the end of the earth. <laughs> I don't think you saw my, my fourth page manifesto about the flat earth, what happens when you fly off the edge. There's a black hole that sucks you on the other side. Obviously, you didn't read my whole letter. <laughs> I'm a busy man. I have a lot to read and get, and get through here. I'm busy too, man. I'm trying to channel all of Dayton, Ohio's votes and all their all their questions straight to you, man. You ain't you not looking in your your email box or nothing. You ain't responding to nobody. Okay, uh, are we getting on this little jet or not? Are we getting on this on this jet or not? Let, let's go. Okay, we can talk about this on, on the plane. All right, fine. Let's go. Even though I prefer a rocket ship, but plane will do. We cut back to a uh, cut back to a, a, a town hall meeting um, where John has returned. Now, my brother, our brother, everybody, everybody, our brother, yeah, mm -hmm. our brother John has returned from his visit with Senator Amici. Now, I don't agree with John's position as a flat earther. I think it's nuts. Okay, I think there's something wrong with you if you believe that the Earth is flat. But Ain't nothing wrong with me. Hold on a minute. Hold on Ain't a nothing minute. Nothing wrong with the no, round hold earth. Hold on a minute now. I know you got your theories about the uh, the moon landing being a fake Antoine, but I'm talking to John right now. We can all agree that we disagree on a lot of things. But the it's thing the we shadows, agree though. It's the shadows. Hold your point, brother. The thing we agree on is that we all don't like Senator Amici. Okay? We all That's have true. come together because mm -hmm. we feel he is not moving legislation the way we need it moved. That's true. All right. So, Brother John, this flight that you say you were supposed to take around the earth to prove that the earth was round or flat, what did y'all find? <clears throat> well, once It don't matter on... to me what you found. What I disagree with is the fact that Senator Amici used all that taxpayer money to take a flight all the way around the world. Now, what sense does that make? What sense does Let that him make? talk. Let yeah. him talk. Okay, okay. All right, I'm sorry. I, but my hate for my hate for Senator Amici is just so strong. I can't sit on it. But go Sister ahead, Tandy, brother. Sister Tandy. I'm quiet. I, I feel you 100 percent All Come right. On. I feel you. It actually costed two million dollars for us yeah. to fly to the airport. Yeah. <laughs> It was two million dollars. It was, it was yeah, there Brother was caviar Anthony. on the plane. They had red lot. I mean, there was there was lobster tails. All kinds of stuff was on that plane. Ooh, he better and be lucky. Just so y'all know, just so y'all know, we did not actually get to prove or disprove whether the earth was flat. We had to stop because we ran out of gas and it cost another two million to get back. So we ended mm. up doing a regular fight, and I just took it out of the city budget to get back to Dayton. But listen, I took it as a cowardly move, right? Mm, he's a coward. Coward. Two he's million coward. dollars. Now, he didn't give me two pounds of, of lobster tail on that mm -hmm. flight. Mm -hmm. mm. We had pay-per-view. Mm. We had all kinds of stuff on there, but he, he, he didn't tell me that he forgot to fill up the tank. I think it's bullshit. You know? Okay. It's bullshit. 
News flash, world is round. Uh, brother uh, Antoine. It didn't bring what? It didn't bring didn't. anything. Brother it was Antoine. inconclusive. We should be presenting both sides to the children and let them decide when the future comes and rocket ships will be more prevalent. I, 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 think, I think we should send Brother Antoine next, man. I think we should send Brother Antoine. Let's go ahead and send Brother Antoine because he just keeps siding with you and getting off the point of hating Amici. I mean, am I the only one that hates Senator Amici? I mean, I no. thought that's what we all bonded. No, we, all, we all hate Amici. We all hate him. Yeah. Y'all hate Amici. We need think, to get the flat earth I, curriculum. I, I, well, I think both of y'all are nuts. That don't make no sense. But whatever gets Amici out is the thing for me. So I'm willing right. to ally myself with you, so. Go on, on, brother Antoine. And scene. <laughs> it's all about finding an ally. Isn't it? like, oh, you yeah. gotta find allies on both sides.